Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Abrams, a clinical psychologist in New York and New Jersey, and a psychology professor at New York University. One of my main areas of expertise as a clinician is in love and sex. Today I'm going to talk about a very fundamental aspect of that domain, which is romantic love, something that is so central to the topics that come up as a therapist, something that is so central to people's well-being and to their self-image. I'm going to do romantic love. Romantic love is one of great passion, one of great theme in literature, film, poetry, going back to pre-biblical times, ancient Babylonia, Rome, India, love that passion that makes us focused, addicted to another person. And why is romantic love like addiction? Because the very same areas of the brain that are involved in addiction are activated in love, and a bit more. The areas of the brain that regulate motivation, one area of the striatum, which contains the caudate nucleus, nucleus accumbens. This is the area that motivates us, makes us seek pleasure, helps record the memory of pleasurable events. This area becomes focused on our beloved. When we're in love, all pleasure becomes centered around contact with that person. So we lose the desire to eat. Sleep becomes less important. This is especially so in men, where evolutionary psychologists believe that the male, in courting that desired female, demonstrates worth, physical strength, competence, the ability to acquire resources to win the commitment and love of his desired female, his beloved woman. The woman, on the other hand, has a similar pattern of obsessive rumination around the man. And indeed, the same brain areas involved in obsessive compulsive disorder are those that become activated in romantic love. In addition, the areas of the brain that regulate stress, the fundamental source of the fight or flight response, become engaged in romantic love. So when we're in love with somebody, when we're near them, stress is reduced. When we're away, we're in a state of chronic stress. We want to fight or flee, but there's no one to fight and no one to flee from. We're missing the one we love. The sad thing about love is that even when it's brought to fruition so that our lover responds and we're able to engage, be romantic, sexual, intimate with the source of our love, Sadly, after about six months on the short side to two years on the long side, the love begins to fade. Now, ideally, it can metamorphose into conjugal love, familial love. That is less intense, less passion, less sexual. So with the loss of the intensity of sex and the passion, can, in good cases, turn into this bond where someone truly is your best friend. It's very nice to have a best friend with whom you could have sex, with whom you can trust, close to unconditionally, the cliched friends with benefits. When romantic love changes, loses its passion, it leads to, in best cases, a conjugal familial relationship and that can endure a lifetime. Now there are cases where romantic love lasts a lifetime that's very rare. More often we get to another possibility in which the romantic love does move on, mature into an enduring familial love but in which one partner or both lose that passion. I'll talk about that eventuality in my next video. Thanks a lot. Hope to see you soon.